2021 Territorial Brave event. We are so happy that you've tuned in from wherever you are, be that with your host core or from our Salvationist Women Facebook page. I want to thank Commissioner Tracy Tidd and Colonel Shelley Hill with the Salvation Army for putting this event on in partnership with Brave. So I'll introduce our hosts, that's Hannah McNeely and Michaela Nempar, and they will be emceeing the rest of this event. Welcome, Hello. ladies! <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> churches across this territory. Woo. Welcome to the Brave Girls event. We are so excited that you're here. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. And we are your co hosts today. We are from the Brave Girls podcast. We started on International Day of the Girl. And my name is Michaela. My name is Hannah, and we have had such a cool journey on this new podcast journey. We are completely new podcast hosts, yes. but we've enjoyed um, getting to know our guests and getting to know our speakers, and we have listeners all across North America, the States, and even Europe, and it's been such a cool an exciting journey that we've got to do this together. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm super excited. Are you not excited? Like I'm hyped. Oh my goodness. This yes. Is we be are so hyped and we love that you guys have come and done this event with us and it's going to be awesome. We have some yes. panelists, we have some trivia, some facts for you, and we have some speakers. And uh, that brings us into our first speaker of the day. Her name is Danielle Strickland. She's the co-founder of Brave Global with Noemi Chavez. And she is from Ontario, Canada. And she is just, she's passionate about women empowerment and about girls. She's an author. She's a speaker. She's a podcast host. Check her out. You can find her at Danielle Strickland on Instagram. And um, she's awesome. So we can't wait to hear her speak today. We hope you love it. Yes, and let's go. You'll see us soon. Enjoy, guys. Hi, my name is Danielle Strickland, and I am a co-founder of Brave Global, along with my fierce warrior sister, Noemi Chavez. We founded Brave because we understood that many, many, many people are oppressed, particularly women in the world suffer from a thing called oppression, which are these things that have happened to women that keep them contained and stuck in these cycles that they can't get out of. It keeps them silenced and it keeps them stuck. And I've always wondered, because I've journeyed my whole life with many of these women who have been silenced, who have had these terrible things happen to them, and I realize that they're some of the bravest, most incredible people I've ever met in my life. And so I always wondered, how does this happen to these women who are so strong and so brave and so incredible and so gifted and all of that? And I just wondered, like, how does this happen? So I've been a student of oppression so that if I understand how it happens, maybe we can stop it from happening and actually get to it sooner rather than later, which brings me to why I'm talking to you. Yes, you listening to this, you brave warrior, this person that you already are. I want to talk about how oppression works. Now, if we were doing this live, which I, you know, I know we all wish we could do, but we can't, I would call up one of you because I would say, look at you. You're brave. You're confident. You're strong. You're gifted. You have an incredible thing to offer the world, which is you, by the way, you and your entirety. But what convinces us that we don't have something to offer the world? What keeps keeps us oppressed. I would call you up and I'd have you sit on a chair, but I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this model. I asked my sons for a female superhero, and this is one from the X-Men. This is Black Widow. I won't get into her incredible strengths, but needless to say, she is very strong and she's very gifted. This is how oppression works, by the way. Taking our true self, who it is that we really are, what oppression does, I'm gonna share with you real stories. I'm gonna tell you about my friend. I'm gonna call her Lisa. Lisa was told uh, when she was a little girl by her mom that she was fat and that she would never be in a meaningful relationship, that men could never respect her if she was fat. And so she developed an eating disorder because she believed a lie that said that first of all, she was fat. When she looks back, she realizes she was not fat. She was the appropriate amount of body fat for females, but also the lie that she would never be in a good relationship or that boys or men or whoever it was would never love her. And that lie covered her own personal strengths. It covered her up. She didn't change. She's still the brave, amazing, incredible, courageous person she always was, except that now she's been covered by a lie. 
Uh, let me tell you about me. When I was 10 years old, I was sexually abused by a relative in my family. And uh, basically, most sexual abuse happens as one in three girls, by the way, are sexually abused. So this is a thing that girls have to figure out what to do with. Boys too, one in six boys. But this is something we have to figure out what to do with because what happens with sexual abuse is usually when somebody touches you inappropriately or in a way that you're not comfortable with, uh, but also it can also be pleasurable. So it's this real mix of things. It's like pleasure mixed with pain, mixed with shame, mixed with guilt. And oftentimes the abuser will make you feel like it's your fault. Like you did something or you acted inappropriately or you liked it or whatever it is. So it's really messes you up. And it's just this thing called abuse and particular for women and especially one in three, sexual abuse. And sexual abuse will actually cover you with a thing called shame. That's another thing that happens to so many women that oppresses them is sexual abuse. Or I can tell you about Tannis. My friend Tannis, who just is a brave ambassador. She went to heaven in December. I miss her dearly. You would have loved her. She's been at most braves that have happened uh, around the world, if we could make it happen. She she gets there. But Tannis uh, is a Cree Nation, credible, strong, um, indigenous woman, warrior. And she was taken from her... Uh, reservation and, and put in adopted into a white family and she grew up in a white community and uh, it was really racist she she dealt with racism her whole life and even as a little girl she told me that you know the more often than not she heard every day of her life going to public school she heard that she was a dirty Indian a racist slur to make her feel bad about the color of her skin this happens so much to so many people who have uh, beautiful uh, backgrounds and cultures. It's a thing called racism. Now, Tanis told me that when she was a little girl, about nine years old, she had, she had watched her mother do the laundry. When she was putting whites in the laundry, she added bleach to make them whiter. And racism so affected the inside of little Tanis that she used to add bleach to her bath every time she'd take a bath to try to make her skin whiter. That kind of racism covered her up with shame and fear and self-loathing. And do you see now what's happening? Even if you're a superhero, you are completely covered by lies and shame and fear and things that happen outside of you that begin to cover yourself up and not only begin to cover you, but convince you that this is who you are, that you're stuck, that your voice doesn't matter, that you have nothing to offer, that you should be ashamed of who you are, that you should you know, try to change your identity. Like whatever the things are, it covers and saturates us. It's called oppression. But this is the deal with some bravery, even now, even now when the start, start things begin happening to you, if we can communicate to each other and be brave with each other, I'm going to tell you the kind of bravery that's needed to undo this oppression. So you don't have to live pretending you're somebody else. You don't have to live all constricted. You don't have to live without a voice or without the strength that you need to help even more and more and more girls be brave together. Here's what happens. You confront it. You identify it. Oh, why do I feel bad about the color of my skin? You start to identify those racist thoughts, those things people said to you that are not okay. You begin to replace those lies and the fear with truth and with bravery. You confront those things and then you remove those things from your life. Oftentimes you're going to need help for this, by the way, which is why we're doing this together. For being brave is not a solo act. It's a community that is brave together. So we can also do this for one another. Now, the shame, sexual abuse. This is a really big one. See, sexual abuse, you have to identify and it's really hard because the first thing that sexual abuse does is it takes away your voice. You're silent about it. And your silence makes you complicit or at least makes you feel like you're complicit. But actually speaking up is the bravest thing you can do when you are sexually abused or even just moving in that direction. When someone's making you feel uncomfortable about your body or even uh, uh, emotionally abusing you or even just any kind of uh, sexual um, uh, advances that are not welcome, all of those things. Speak up, call the hotline, tell a friend, get some help. If you have been sexually abused, listen to me, get some help. Find a counselor, call the helpline, say, I need to undo this oppression. And it's going to be brave to do it because you're going to be afraid and it's going to be really hard. But to do that, to be brave like that is not only going to help you, 
It's also going to help so many other people. And listen, those lies that you believed, if not from people in your family or people around you, at least even from our culture that tells us all the time that we're not pretty enough or not strong enough or not brave enough or not shaped right enough or not whatever, fill in the blank, not pretty enough. On and on these lies go. So to be brave is to identify those lies. And then to confront them and say, is that true? Are all the most amazing people that change the earth, are they perfectly shaped? I can tell you right now the answer is no. They're shaped exactly the way they're supposed to be shaped for their body. They're beautiful as they are. They know who they are and they're brave enough to take these things off of their life. And not just by themselves, but together. And this is what the most amazing thing is that happens. This person, you, before all this oppression, you're still the same beautiful person you always were. Gifted, strong, wise, with all of these incredible things to offer the world. You're still that person. You've just uncovered who it is that you really always were created to be. And here's what happens. All those oppressive blankets that would have covered your life, all those things that you took off of yourself, what happens is they become a lifeline. Now, if this was real life, of course, I would throw these sheets, these would be big sheets, and I would throw them out into the audience, and I would say, hang on, hang on. Who needs to hang on? Who needs to undo the oppression in their own life? Hang on, and we would pull together, we would pull you up so that you could participate by being brave. See, the braver, even all the things that were against you, if you throw them off, if you identify them, and then you can use even those things, like I shared about today, as a lifeline to help other people be brave. We can be brave together. That's why we started Brave Global, because you're already brave and we want to help you be brave together. All right. Be the person you were always created to be. Let's throw off oppression now before it gets any worse. And let's spread the good news that together we can be who we were always created to be brave. Oh my goodness. So great Amazing. to hear from Danielle. Her imagery, her talk was just so oh, great. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I love her. So Michaela, what was your favorite mm -hmm. part? Oh, first off, I have to say Danielle Strickland is a powerhouse, guys. Oh my gosh. Oh, what she was saying was just amazing. But my favorite part would have to have been when she talked about how, like, if we were all in the same room, she would have a blanket, she would throw it out to the audience and we would just hold on to it. And she would say, like, just hold on, be brave, don't give up, like, keep speaking out because that's what makes us brave. And mm -hmm. I felt that. I was like, yes, I absolutely agree. Oh, yeah, fantastic. that's so, so beautiful because I think mm -hmm. what is one of the most powerful things about brave and about these brave events, especially when we're live is just to see like, you know, all these people around you and to, mm -hmm. to know that you're in it together, this community of girls yeah. that have similar stories as you that have similar, you know, that are from the same places. And I just love that. So mm -hmm. where you are listening right now, just know that um, across the territory, across Canada, there are yeah. girls in all different provinces that are listening to this event mm -hmm. with you um, that are part of your community in this. So it's a super cool to be a part of that. And we love that you are all watching us. Absolutely. So it's great. And that was an awesome speak from Danielle. So we're really thankful yeah. that she's been here. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're going into next is a panel. This panel is moderated by the Divisional Secretary of Women's Ministries, Captain mm -hmm. Laura. She's in Ontario. And she is joined by Cheryl, um, Cheryl Nimpard. She is a podcaster, TV show host, author. She's basically a genius. She also <laughs> produced our <laughs> Uh, podcast. So we love Cheryl and you will love Cheryl. So yes. it's going to be really awesome. Um, who else is she joined by? 
Yes, on the panel, we also have Major Sherry Russell, who is the territory's Aboriginal consultant. And we also have Danielle Strickland back. Like, how amazing is that? Like, I know this is going to be so impactful. I'm so ready. And then right after the panelists, we do have a keynote from Cheryl. So hold on tight. It's going to be great. Ah, I'm so excited. <laughs> yes, I am so excited to hear Cheryl speak. And it's mm -hmm. going to be really cool. And we will see yes. you back in a little bit. Yes, later. Well, Cheryl, Danielle, and Sherry, we are honored to have the three of you here to be a part of our panel at this year's Brave Youth Empowerment event. Thanks to each of you for your willingness to be here and to share from your heart with the girls who have gathered across the territory online today. We only have about 30 minutes together, which may seem like a long time, but it is going to fly by. And I know each of you have so much to share. So let's just dive right into our first question. And Cheryl, perhaps we can have you answer this first one. Yeah. Everyone goes through unique challenges in each season of life, but those we experience as a teen are often unique. What are some of the challenges you faced as a teenager? Oh my goodness, what are some of the challenges I didn't face is the question. Um, uh, so growing up, I had a really tough childhood. Um, uh, at a young age, I was a, a victim of sexual molestation from the ages of five to 12. Uh, and that really, um, as, as it does for so many of us, it, 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 it threw me off my game. It, it affected my mental health, my wellness. Um, and I became a very angry, angry teen because, you know, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that when you love away anger and heal away anger, you'll see that there's a very wounded child underneath. And so I was just piling anger on top of her. That, that caused me to make some decisions that I wasn't proud of. I ended up joining a gang from the age of 13 to 16 and I gang banged for three years. I would have probably stayed in the gang much longer, but I had an incident with the gang and a couple of the guys turned on me and I suffered a sexual assault at 16. That kind of snapped me. Um, I literally can say that I felt like I died inside. I lost my sense of self, my purity, my, you know, dreams, everything gets shattered. And that's unfortunately, um, you know, the, I guess the devastation that happens uh, after sexual assault. That caused me to go on and off the street for about three years, um, uh, really making some um, decisions. I didn't care about how I lived. I was sort of just... Uh, cutting and doing some other things that were a lot, a lot of self-harm stuff and uh, was reached by a urban missionary uh, at the age of 19 who was working in and around the uh, Toronto Eaton Center, if anybody knows that area and all of that, that core down there and uh, just kind of loved me back to life, as they say, and uh, the rest is history. Uh, so that's where I am now. Thanks so much for sharing, Cheryl. You're already showing your bravery in being vulnerable enough to share that story. I loved what you said about that urban missionary loved you back to life. What a beautiful image that, uh, that, that paints for us. Um, Sherry, I wonder if you can answer the same question because each of our uh, teen years looks different. Sherry, what were some of the challenges that you faced as a teenager? Um, as a teenager, as a child, I think some of the, right from the onset, I encountered quite a few challenges. Uh, for those who uh, may not know, I'm Anishinaabe or Indigenous, if you want to use a more global term. Um, I'm Anishinaabe and I was part of the 60 Scoop, which is a government policy that just came in and literally scooped up children from Indigenous homes and place them in non-Indigenous homes so that we would be assimilated. We'd forget our culture, we'd forget our backgrounds. Um, and so that was really my onset. Um, and when we were scooped up, I was placed into foster care homes um, and eventually adopted um, into one. And my father there uh, passed away suddenly. And so then I was put back into the foster care system. And in those days, I don't think they really cleared or went through the same criteria for foster care. Um, and so experienced um, various kinds of abuse um, in those and then was eventually um, adopted again into a Christian non-Indigenous home. And I think growing up in that uh, created a different set of challenges, trying to find out and see who I was and where I fit into 
the world that I now found myself in, where I was the only one with my skin color um, and, you know, experiencing differences as far as worldviews and how we process things and how we think through things. And so those, I mean, those kind of um, overshadowed some of the other challenges I experienced that are typical, normal, I guess, teenage years, trying to fit in, trying to figure out where you want to go in life. Um, and, you know, um, in my life, we moved around a lot. So that also encountered a few other challenges um, in that process. So. Thanks so much for sharing that, Sherry. Some of your unique challenges, but also touching on the fact that all teenagers go through some of those more general challenges of trying to fit in. Um, just because they're generalized doesn't make them any less real. And, uh, and so it's good to, to recognize and to honor the fact that all teens go through specific unique challenges. Um, people always like to share their triumphs, like what they're awesome at, what they feel proud about. But the one way that we can really help others is if we're willing to be vulnerable enough to share some of our challenges. And so thanks to Cheryl and Sherry for already doing that today. Um, sometimes it's not just challenges, but the choices we make in our situations that really shape uh, what our teen years look like and, and who we are. Danielle, I'm wondering if you would be willing to share maybe one of those not so great choices that you've made in life, perhaps while you were a teenager, or if you want to speak about another season of life, that's okay too. But a, a choice that you made that maybe wasn't, wasn't so great looking back. Yeah, wow. I could be here all day talking about choices that I made that were the wrong one, uh, especially when you have a backdrop of confusion about who you are and where you belong and what your purpose is. But I would say the biggest overarching idea that I believe that caused me to make bad choices over and over again was that rebellion was freedom. So I grew up in a religious household and thought that, you know, faith was this way of squeezing us into this like boring conformed vanilla life that God was perpetually disappointed. And so what's the point of this thing? So I believed that the way to freedom was through choosing rebellion. And so that led me to like all of those terrible choices, like drugs and like hanging out with people who were also into rebellion and then eventually like into a jail cell. So I would say that it wasn't until the end where I, what I thought was freedom actually led me into a smaller and smaller and smaller life until I was literally stuck in a tiny room with a door locked and I couldn't go anywhere that I was like, oh, I see this isn't freedom after all. So once I figured out that rebellion leads to death, that's where that goes, but there's something else, then I could actually choose a different way. But that lie probably is the backdrop of most of the choices I made as a teenager that I regret. You mentioned that turnaround point for you being in that, that jail cell. Um, was there something specific about that that really became your aha moment, realized that um, life could look different and you could make different choices? Yeah, for me, it actually was like a aha moment. That's exactly what it was. There was a lady from the Salvation Army who came to visit me there. Uh, it was in a holding cell, so you weren't even really allowed visitors. But I say somehow in her super Salvation Army suit, she was able to go where no other person can go or something. And, uh, and then she just actually loved me. And this is interesting because Cheryl used that term, love me back to life. Um, and what happened was when she, she literally just like hugged me, I did not hug her back. I was not interested. And as a matter of fact, I wasn't even thankful for her visit. I was like, oh, brother, here comes the religious people coming to kill the party. I was still believing the lie. And then when she left, I actually had this weird spiritual experience and it's very difficult to explain even to myself, but I had this uh, revelation of the person of Jesus actually. Uh, and I had the same thing happen. So where I had thought that God was angry and I was an enemy of God for, because of my behavior, I realized that I was not, that he was not mad at me, that actually he was love and he loved me unconditionally right in that spot. And that revelation, actually, I say it turned on a light. So it didn't fix me. It wasn't Disney. It's not a Disney story. <laughs> There's no magical fairy dust fell from the ceiling. And I was like, you know, none of that happened. But what did happen is something went on in me, a light came on in me. And I remember looking around at this jail cell and me in it, and saying, well, I can't say it on, on this because it's I, I can't tell you exactly what I said. But basically it was this, nuts, I'm in jail, right? Like even the idea that like, I'm like, 
that idea that this is leading to death, like this is not a good place to be. You would think I would have already learned that, but I hadn't. It was that experience of love that actually woke me up and turned a light on about what the real situation was. So I'm super thankful for that. Yeah, that is so good. I love the the common theme of love coming through already that love can can really change a life. Love can can make us brave. And that's so, so good. Thanks so much for sharing, Danielle. Um, well, we've heard from three unique stories now of teenage years. And I think it's fair to say that no one's teen years are perfect. That's for sure. And each of you have been so vulnerable in your sharing. Um, I'd like to ask um, each of you this question, I think, in turn. Uh, maybe we'll start with Sherry this time. If you could go back and give your teenage self some advice, what would it be? Uh, well, there's a lot of things I'd actually like to go back and, and tell my teenage self, um, especially thinking through those years of 13. Um, I think some of the ones that come to my mind, and it's a, just a message, you are beautiful, you are a gift, you don't have to be defined by your past or your experiences. And I think so often in our society, we define things and people by what they do um, or by what they're lacking rather than their personhood or their strengths or their gifts. And um, I, I just want to share a little example of this because it was, it was kind of profound for me. As I went back and um, kind of embraced who I was as an indigenous woman and began to learn about some of the teachings uh, one of the things that I struggled with as a teen was figuring out this whole menstrual cycle thing. And often in our society, we see it as a negative thing. It's a burden, a curse, even uh, something shameful. But within our Anishinaabe teachings, this is taught very differently. And as women, we are a gift and we are life carriers. And as such, that creates a, a great respect and, and a place of honor um, and it is during our moon cycle or our menstrual cycle that we're the most powerful. And that's one thing that as a, as a young woman, I never saw myself as powerful um, or as having any strengths or being a precious commodity, if you want to use that word commodity, because in our world, we think of people often as commodities. Um, but to see that precious, and I would use the word treasure instead of that, a precious treasure to be honored um, and respected. And so if I could kind of go back and say, you know, this is actually who you are and you want to walk in that and treat yourself in that way. Great advice to give to your younger self and to give to all of the young girls that are listening uh, here today. So thank you, Sherry. Uh, Cheryl, how about you? If you could tell your 13 year old self something, what would you say? Um, I think the first thing I would say is um, you're amazing and wonderful and unique, but you also don't know everything. So just calm down. <laughs> just calm down. I felt like I knew everything and that caused me to never listen to instruction, uh, guidance. And I, and I realize now that the people that were in my life had some wisdom. They were saying some true right things. Um, I would also encourage this 13 year old um, to, to not hold on to her anger, but to find a safe, split, safe space to let it go, to share. Um, and I would tell her that that anger, if she holds on to it the way she's going to, it will become poison in her system. That unforgiveness, that bitterness, that rage will cause her to make some decisions that she will further regret. So uh, let it go, sis, let it go. Forgive, talk, share, cry out, kick, scream, whatever you wanna do, but let it go. And the last thing is, uh, girls are not your enemy. Girls are not your enemy. Um, and if you are in a space where you feel you are competing and comparing, those aren't true friends, find yourself uh, that squad that'll ride or die for you, um, that will cheer you on and never tear you down. But don't ever view women as enemies because we are better together, stronger together. Awesome advice. So much to take from that as well, Cheryl. Um, someone just recently was sharing with me and said that um, comparison 
is the thief of joy. And that just stuck really hard with me. So I, I love that idea and that, that truth that um, girls are not the enemy, right? And that we don't need to be in competition with each other. We should support each other better together. Fantastic words, Cheryl. And then Danielle, same question for you. If you could go back and tell your teenage self something, give your teenage self some advice, what would you share? Well, I would say listen to Sherry and Cheryl for sure. That advice is amazing, guys. Thank you so much. I wrote it down for myself even now. Um, but I would say uh, I would say a couple things. Like your life is a gift. Uh, you were born to serve. You were born to help. You were born in late. You have gifts inside of you that were designed for you, but also to be enjoyed and to help others. Um, I would say that uh, the bravest thing you could do is to get help. The bravest thing you could do is to get help. And uh, I think I believed, you know, that being bad was better than being sad. So I repressed a lot of sadness and never really got help for it because I thought that, you know, that was weakness. Uh, it turns out that's strength and the strongest, hardest thing ever to the bravest thing you'll ever do is to tell the truth and to get some help uh, for what you need. So I would also tell myself that I was worthy that I was worthy of help, that I was worthy of care, that I was worthy of caring for myself. You know, taking care of myself is, is part of the inherent worth that is in me. Uh, I would tell me that. And I would say that um, this is gonna pass, <laughs> that this is not the sum of your total life. Uh, this season that is hard and difficult and complex and is supposed to raise questions about belonging and you know who you are and all that kind of stuff, that this isn't the end. Uh, this is just a passageway so that there's light and hope and much more to come. Uh, yeah. So th those are a few of the things I would tell myself. That's great. Thanks, Danielle. Cheryl, you mentioned something in your advice to your teen self that I just want to pick up on a little bit. You said yeah. that one of the pieces of advice you would give to yourself is that you would listen to those around you. That piece of advice that, you know, teenage self, you don't know it all, right? So listen to the people around you. Wondering who... Who were the most influential people in your life that you did listen to that really shaped your life? Um, the, the most influential person in my life, uh, his name is Chris, and he's, uh, he was a young millennial, 20-something guy um, that could not stop going to the streets at night, was fueled to reach out and care, brought sandwiches, cookies, bought hot chocolates. Um, influential because he was the first person that told me that my life mattered and that it wasn't a mistake and that everything I've gone through is not the end of my story. It's, it's, it's the end of a chapter in my story and that God was ready to write many more amazing, incredible chapters. And so that, that gave me hope. It gave me a sense of, of purpose. Um, and, and that, again, love ignited something in me. It just, it literally like karate chopped <laughs> hate and anger like in its throat. And it was the best thing ever. Um, I have to say this, the person that I am shocked to say is, is the person that changed my life was my mom. But I'll tell you something, up until 20 something, I would not have answered that question. Uh, you know, we, we bucked heads, we, we, we fought, we were, it was a toxic relationship. Uh, but I see it, I see it now. As you grow older, you understand, oh, you were a single mom, you were struggling, you were working, you know, triple shifts. I get it. And you did the best that you could. And so age gives you clarity. And so I realize now that our parents, you know, are one of the most influential people in our lives. If we allow them to be that. I love that. Again, it's the choice to, to listen, the choice to allow these positive people to impact our lives, right? Because we can choose to shut them out as well. All right. That's great. Thanks so much, Cheryl, for sharing that. Well, we're living through some fairly extraordinary times right now with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, many of us are gathered online because we just can't gather in person. And that's just one example of the way that our lives look radically different now than they did even a year ago. We have just a few more minutes together. And I'd love if we could close off our time together with each of our panelists just sharing what you are having to be brave for today with respect to the pandemic. Um, Danielle, maybe you can start us off this time. 
Sure. Um, I would say that bravery for me looks like staying put <laughs> and figuring out how to be content uh, and to be in my body instead of like wanting to be out of my body. So like uh, things like being present to this moment. I think bravery for me looks like doing things in a new way that I, I don't like, but I'm willing to try. So that's brave. And I think staying connected to myself, to the people around me, to the folks that I can, even through this uh, form, that's what bravery looks like, just to keep showing up and doing it. Uh, to choose positive things, even though all I want to do is escape, eat sugar and fist loads of carbs and uh, watch Netflix, you know, but to choose instead healthy options to care for myself, to stay connected, to keep reaching out, to stay open. Those are all things that, you know, that's how brave looks for me during this, during this pandemic. That's great. Thanks, Danielle. Uh, Cheryl, same question. What does being brave look like for you today in the midst <laughs> of this pandemic? Well, um, I have to say my situation in this pandemic has been uh, pretty heavy. Um, I've, I, I've actually experienced seven deaths. Number seven just happened, the funeral just happened on the weekend and many were due to COVID. And so COVID is something that is um, killing my community at an alarming rate. Black and brown uh, people are dying by, you know, by the droves with COVID. And, uh, and it, it seems very unique, um, but it is a shared experience at the same time. So for me, brave looks like showing up, um, just taking a breath, waking up and starting a new day and not allowing the weight and the darkness of grief and sadness and depression to overwhelm me. Brave looks like getting back up every time I've been knocked down and I feel like, uh, you know, it's like waves. You feel like you're kind of catching your breath in another wave. And I know that someone is watching that feels that right now. And I just want to tell you, get back up, get back up and just breathe. You don't need to figure anything else out. Just stand on the two feet and just say, I will face the day again. I will love again. I will trust again. I will, you know, I, I will be in humanity again, you know, so. Bravery really is a choice each and every day. Danielle, Cheryl, you've both shared that, that it's a choice to get up every day, a choice to love, um, a choice to breathe. It's a great. Sherry, um, same question for you, because I know each of our realities are different. What does being brave look like for you today? Uh, well, I'd echo both Danielle and Cheryl in that, um, personally, I think there are ways in which we need to be brave, but um, as the world has unfolded, and I think of some of the significant events that have happened in the United States and in Canada, um, I think for me being brave is to find my voice in different ways um, and to empower um, other people to speak up against some of the injustice that is still going on, that you know, the situations have just kind of lifted the lid or shone some light on it there's always been this undercurrent. And we think of, um, you know, racism, especially within our North American context and being able to, to share my own personal experiences, but to say, hey, these are ways in which we can work proactively um, to combat these social injustices. And COVID has just kind of also been another light um, for Indigenous communities, Black, Brown communities, Indigenous communities that are impacted very significantly. Um, and so being able to speak up and to say, hey, you know, this COVID is shining a light on this, but this has been going on for literally a century um, within our context. Yeah, COVID really has changed so many different things. In many ways, it's made our world dark, but in, in some other ways, it really has shone a light on some very important realities in our world. And so I echo Sherry's words there as well. Um, girls, find your voice, speak up for the things that are important in your schools, in your communities, uh, and in the world. And uh, that choice, as, as Danielle and Cheryl said, that choice to be brave um, is so, so important. And it's a choice that you can make each and every day, girls. So I just want to thank uh, our panelists, Danielle, Cheryl, Sherry. Thank you so much to each of you for sharing from your heart today, 
for being brave in your vulnerability and your honesty. It is a gift to hear from your heart and to hear your story. I know I've been blessed by being able to chat with you today. And I'm sure each of the girls listening have been encouraged and blessed as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. Today, what's up? My name is Cheryl Nemhart. I'm so excited to be with you guys. What's up, Brave Canada? What's up, Brave Girls? How y'all doing? I hope that you're having a blast. I hope that you're hanging out with your girls today, or maybe you came by yourself, and I hope that you've met a new friend and that you're having a great time. We are so excited that you're here. We're so pumped that you're here. And I want to shout out every worker and every volunteer that's making this day super special. Well, guys, I hope that you have been listening to everything and you're encouraged by all of the discussions that are going on. And I bet you, I can almost bet you 20 bucks that you've heard the word brave at least 10 times. I'm sure you have. But here's the truth. Um, we're in a crazy time. Like, seriously, this is probably one of the hardest times globally that we have ever faced. This pandemic, this COVID pandemic has caused such loss and grief and sadness and upset and turmoil. And it's, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. And then you mix in with that, the, po the political unrest that's in the States for those that are affected directly or indirectly. And then you mix in on top of that, all of the racial tensions and the racial uh, reckoning and the protests and people crying out for justice. It is an intense time. Y'all, it's a real thing out here. It's serious. And, you know, I was thinking about you guys as I was just kind of running over a couple of things that I wanted to share with you. And my heart just broke for you guys, because here's the truth. Sometimes you guys get overlooked. Your pain gets overlooked because you're young. And people think, well, we're going through so much and adults are having it bad. Oh, the kids are fine. They're fine. They're okay. Blah, blah, blah. But the truth is you're not. And everything we're going through, you're going through in your own way. And the disappointments and the hardships and the loss, you're feeling them. And all the questions and the anger and the frustration, you are seeing it. And the hatred, you're seeing it. You're seeing it all and you're taking it in and it's affecting you. It's affecting you and it's impacting your life. And here's another fact. Before March 2020, before this COVID moment touched down in our lives, some of you were not having a great time then. When everything was normal and fine and chill, and as we say, blessed, uh, some of you were not feeling so great. You were maybe hurt by a friend. You might have had uh, frenemies that really, really let you down, shared your secrets, stabbed you in the back, gossiped about you. You may have been have, experiencing a bullying situation at school with someone who was like really not cool and giving you a little bit of anxiety about even going to school, making you feel bad for the way you looked, sound, dressed, anything about you and, 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 and isolating you from everyone around you. For some of you, uh, you didn't like what you saw in the mirror. Can we talk about that for a sec? You weren't feeling so great about yourself. And so you were going through a lot emotionally and it was already a stressful time. And then, boom, here drops COVID. And so what was already a tough situation gets compounded. And that's the thing about storms. Sometimes they just come one after the other after the other. And it feels like you can't catch your breath. Anyone feeling like that right now? Anyone feeling like a lot is going on in their life and it's kind of crazy? And you know, some of you that are going through this season, your home life, like let's talk about that. Your home life is not the best. It wasn't great on a good day. There was a lot of arguing, people not maybe talking to each other, few fights and feuds, 
Maybe it was super toxic and you always look forward to leaving the house to catch a break, to, to, to catch your breath, to reset. And now you're home all the time, all the time, 24 hours. And that makes things really, really tense. For some of you, you had a great job. You were just getting that new job, or maybe you're in the swing of things and you're getting that coin, that shmoney, as Cardi says, and you were really enjoying your independence and then boom, you lost your job. And now you don't know how you're going to, you know, get stuff done, um, get, you know, pay for a couple of things. Some of you were thinking of uh, paying school fees and, and it's a lot. There's a lot going on. And then I'm mindful of the kids that are here listening to me that maybe your parents lost their job. Maybe your parents ex experienced a de decrease in their job life and there's a financial strain. All of these things and more and more. And then if you're like me, uh, my situation in 2020, whew, talk about a storm. I lost seven people. Yeah, seven deaths, seven in 2020 alone. And maybe you're listening to me and you lost a loved one because of COVID. And that's really hitting home. And maybe it hurts a lot if you're like me to hear people question and wonder and mock and make light of. And that's perhaps another pain that's happening that's going on underneath the surface. Speaking about underneath the surface, here's the truth. We can hide a lot behind our smiles. Oh yeah, make no mistake, KKW and uh, and Kylie Cosmetics and a little Fenty Beauty, that can cover up a lot, little contour, little highlight, I know about all that stuff, yes, yes. And all the blush and all the popping can't cover up what's really going on on the inside. So I wonder, girls, can we talk? Can we have real talk just for a minute? Me and you, no one around, don't look to your right or your left, Just just us right here. You can only fake it till you make it for so long. And sometimes you just need to white flag. And can I tell you that crying out for help, saying I'm overwhelmed, this is too much, that in itself is one of the bravest things that you can do. I used to always think that asking for help was a sign of weakness. I could not be more wrong. Bravery is knowing when you're at your limit. You know, I used to have a really twisted, weird understanding of what bravery was. I came from a very tough life. I've gone through a lot. And when I say a lot, who child, I mean a lot. Uh, sexual molestation, abuse, gangs, drugs, alcohol, uh, on and off the streets, violence, anger, like pain, it, it, you know, it, it's everything you can think of and more. Fatherless, all of it, just all, like, like all the stats, you know, textbook classic uh, at risk youth, insert Cheryl here. You could just flip the Wikipedia, boom, there she is. And so I always thought that bravery looked different. It looked like superhero stuff. You know, it looked like Xena, it looked like warrior. It looked like a cape and an S and, uh, and the belt. It looked like Wonder Woman, but that's not, that's not true. And you know, that kind of feeling of like bravery being this big, huge, over the top thing, that is dangerous thinking. You know, bravery sometimes is just showing up. Just getting back up after they say whatever they say to you, after that horrible day, after you crying your eyes out, after, after a setback, after a knockdown, just getting back up is the bravest thing. And so here's what I know for sure. Bravery looks different to every single person in life. Bravery looks different than it is for me. And bravery looks different for you than it is for someone to your right and for them to the person to their left. For all of us, bravery will look different. And so we don't place any comparison. We're not here to compare or compete. By the way, P.S. Sis, girls are not your competition. Girls are your tribe. They're not your competition. So we don't compare. And we don't compete because that's JK stuff. And we're so over that flips hair. 
right? And so we don't compare bravery because bravery looks different. And I love this quote. This just, it just sums it all up for me. It's from Veronica Roth, and you may not know that name, but she wrote the Divergent series. Anybody know the Divergent series? Love that movie. The guy in there was super cute, a little too young for me, way too young for me. But I'm just saying, just optics wise, he was cute in the face. That's it. Okay. And she wrote this amazing quote that I want to give to you. And I think it really sums up the different kinds of bravery that we can have. She says, there are so many ways to be brave in this world. Sometimes bravery involves laying down your life for something bigger than yourself or for someone else. Sometimes it involves giving up everything you have ever known for someone you love or have ever loved. And it's even for giving up something to get something greater. I love that. Giving up what you love for the sake of something greater. And I love this part, but sometimes that's not bravery. Sometimes bravery is nothing more than gritting your teeth through the pain. Can I say that again? Sometimes bravery is nothing more than just gritting your teeth through the pain, doing the work of the everyday and sometimes bravery is the slow walk toward a better life. That is the sort of bravery I must have now. Oh, I love that. I love that because the, the bravery that I see for us today is the bravery to show up, to show up to life, to get back up, to move forward to a better day. And so I thought that I'd break down bravery for me and what I'd love to see in your life. When we talk about being brave today, I want you to remember these five things. And number one, B, I want you to be brave enough to believe in yourself, to believe in you. I want you to be brave enough to believe in your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your future. Here's the truth. We can't always walk around with a cheering squad. I would love to go everywhere and hear, ready? Okay, give me a C. Woo, give me an A. It's not, that's not life. That's not life. That's not real. I would love that. I would love the pyramid everywhere I go and just feel like a champion. But the truth is we have to believe in ourselves because sometimes it feels like no one else is. You feel me? I want you guys to believe in yourself. Believe that you have greatness in you, that you have potential in you, that your future is blazing bright, and that there's so much more ahead. You are greater. You are more talented. You are more awesome than you know. You're stronger than you know. So I want you to look at yourself and say, I will believe in myself. I don't need anyone to sway me either way. And this is what I always say. The applause, woo, Cheryl, doesn't move me. Not one bit. The boos, boo, all the haters, doesn't move me. I am not moved by the applause or the boos. And what people think about me makes no difference. Why? Because I learned to cheer for myself. I learned to be a cheer squad of one. So I want you to believe in yourself, believe in your abilities, believe in your potential and in your future. Oh, it's bright. Here's the R, I love the R. I want you to have a royalty mindset. I just feel like a little, I feel like a little Beyonce moment. Can we just do the, just sis, put the crown on. I feel like we need to remind ourselves that we are queens. What do I mean by that? Because you're thinking, I don't have a crown. I'm not, uh, I'm not in Buckingham Palace, but you are, you are a queen. We're talking about loving yourself and having a high sense of value, self-appreciation, self-worth, self-love. You're a queen. And when you know that you're a queen, you carry yourself differently. You act differently. You don't allow certain things in your circle 
and you don't allow certain people in your circle. I want to share this with you. You may not have a physical crown, sis, and your crown may not be made with rhinestones and gold and diamonds like all of the other royal families from history before. But sis, your crown is made with strength. Your crown is made with confidence. Your crown is made with joy. Your crown is made with intelligence, talents, abilities, self-worth. Your crown is made with dignity. Hold your head up, sis. You're a queen. Your crown is made uh, in a way that it's hard to break. No haters no frenemies, no horrible crushing words, no people leaving you high and dry, disappointing you. None of that will shatter your crown. They may try, but they will not succeed because your crown is made with the strongest alloy of all, and it's called courage. And so I encourage you today to put your crown back on. Here's the truth. Many things in our lives will try to knock our crowns. When I was young, I had a lot of incidents in my life, a lot of horrible, dark chapters that try to knock my crown. And maybe you've had situations where you feel like the crown, that feeling that you're invincible, that you're beautiful, that you're awesome, that your royalty got knocked to the ground. And now you feel horrible, you doubt, you want to shrink in a corner. You want to hide. Sis, pick, pick your crown back up. Sis, pick your crown back up and know that you are a queen. And I encourage you, since we're here and we're having a little girl talk, to stay on your throne. What do I mean by that? Well, let me put it this way. I have never seen a queen come off of her royal throne and go into the gutter to find her boyfriend. Ooh, did she say what she, did she? Yes, I said what I said. I want you to stay on your throne. You are the prize. You are the prize. Let them come to you. We don't need to chase anyone. We are too valuable. Oh, I just, I feel it. I feel it now. I just want to lift my head up. Oh, we're too valuable. We are too valuable to give ourselves away. We're royal. Here's the A. I want you to be brave enough to be authentically you. That's an amazing, brave way of being, that you don't have to conform to anyone else. You don't have to follow any patterns, fashions. You do not have to conform to pressure. I have this great saying that I love to say, and I made it a shirt a long time ago. It says this, why be you when I can be me? Why be you when I can be me? I want you to be authentically you in all of your facets. The things that you love to do, don't change them. Don't lose what you love just to fit in. Don't change who you are just to fit in. Don't do things that make you feel like you're compromising your value. And you'll know it. You'll know it, hon. When you're sitting in that place, listening to that conversation, and it feels horrible, and they're laughing at someone, and you're thinking to yourself, this isn't me. I'm not this person. That's not being authentically you. I want you to step in to who you fully are and know that the people that will rock with you your tribe will love you for you. They'll love you for who you are and they'll not try to change you. So be authentically you. Don't put on anything that doesn't fit. Take all of that off. I want you to just loosen up. Take off all the fakeness. Take off all the pressure to fit in and just be yourself. It's so exhausting trying to be someone else. Just be authentically you. That's one of the bravest things you can do when the world is charging this way at your high school and you look at them and go, nah, I'm good right here. Huh, so brave. Here's, here's V. So we did B, we did R, we did, we did A, authentically you. Here's V. I want you to be brave enough to use your voice and not just use your voice. Let me back that up. I want you to own your voice. I want you to understand that you have a voice right here, 
is one of the most powerful instruments that you carry on your person. Your voice can change the world. Did you know that? Your voice, your voice can change the world. It can shake the earth. You have so much power in your voice. I want you to own it. I don't want anyone to make you feel like you've got to mute it. You've got to be silent. You've got to shrink. You can't be you. I want you to speak up. I want you to speak out. I want you to speak on the things that matter. I want you to say this is wrong. This is not right. I want you to stand for truth. I want you to be a truth teller. I want you to own your voice because you have a big one. You have a huge voice that will change this world. I want you not to shrink down. I used to always be told I was too much in a room. Oh, I hated that. Oh, you know, just don't be so much, Cheryl. Don't be so much. Turn it down. Dim down. And you know what ended up happening? I dimmed down so much that I literally shrunk back. I shrunk in the room. I didn't want to, I was always worried about what would people say? What would people think? Is this too much? Am I being too much? Am I saying too much? I have a great idea, but maybe I shouldn't share it because I shared an idea about 50 minutes ago and that'll be two in an hour. And oh my goodness, guys, I was literally sitting down on all of the talents and abilities that I had. You have great ideas, share them. You have a voice, use it. It is powerful. It is needed. We want to hear it. It is, it, is, it is worth every single word that comes out of your mouth. We love, I can say for us here at Brave and all of those that are cheering for you that aren't even in the room, we want to hear your voice. So speak up, amplify your voice. And then lastly, I want you to use it. I want you to use it as a leader because you're not a follower. P.S. You're not a follower, you're a leader. So use your voice to shape and change, set an example and lead. And I'm so excited to see all the ways you're going to do that. Well, that leaves us down to E and then we'll do a cool recap. And hopefully you can take this with you and remember Brave in this cool way. E, the most important of all, I want you to be brave enough to know that you're enough. You, as you are, with the brown hair, with the blonde hair, with the red hair, with the dreads, with the shaved head, with the tattoos, without the tattoos, with the nose rings, without the nose rings, what, like with all of it, with all of it, you are enough as your quirky, beautiful self with all of the facets of who you are, you are enough. Don't ever think that you're not enough. And that is a place where people can try to seep in and begin to manipulate who you are. So know that when you walk in a room, you are enough. You're not too much. I want to take that away. You can never, ever, can I help you? You can never, ever, ever, let me just get a little hype, ever, ever be too much in a room. You are enough as you are. And so I encourage you to think about brave in these ways. Be brave enough to believe in yourself. Be brave enough to love yourself and treat yourself like a queen. Be brave enough to never change, never conform, never try to fit in, but stand out as your authentic self. Be brave enough to speak up and speak out when it matters, when it's important to you, when it means something, when you're passionate about something, use your voice in any way and it will shape the world. And be brave enough to know that without doing anything, without the makeup, the trappings, the shoes, the money, no money, where you live, where you don't live, you are enough just as you are. And so I want to tell you, I want you to shine. And we are so excited for your future. I want you to be brave. It's a tough time, but you got it in you. So stand up. You ready? Throw those shoulders back. Lift that head up. And if you want to be a little sassy like me, sis, put that crown on. Give me a little neck and a snap and be brave. 
Love you. Welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was so impactful. The panelists, the keynote. Uh, Hannah, what was your favorite part about the panelists? Oh my goodness. There are so many things to say. Like, wow, I just feel, I feel so empowered by Cheryl. I feel so empowered by this conversation with the panelists. It was so cool. I hope you loved it. Um, my favorite part of the panelists, I'd say, um, I mean, I just loved this whole theme of love, this whole theme of love being transformational, you know, mm -hmm. turning on a light, that aha yes. moment. Um, I loved that. I really, really loved that and how that was consistent through uh, the three stories of these three mm -hmm. women. And I just want to say the fact that we got to have these three women on the same panel in the same room, you know, well, Zoom room, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> just hearing from them together was so cool. Um, and, you know, the similarities within their stories and some of the differences, it was just really awesome, um, really wow. powerful. So I, yeah, I loved, I loved all of it. I loved um, the, the unsung heroes of it all, you know, the people who mm -hmm. show them love, the people that show right. us love in our lives that are, that is powerful. And that's, uh, you know, that kind of brings back truth that um, recenters us to where we are and where we're going. Um, I okay. loved that. Yeah. Absolutely oh my gosh. It. Yes, absolutely. I have to agree with you. Like these women are powerhouses. I know that I was impacted today. And I, I know, I think you guys were impacted today. They're amazing, beautiful speakers. Oh my gosh. And guys, we are so happy that we were your co-host today. Oh Thank my you goodness. for allowing us that. Wow. Like the yes. privilege is so great. <laughs> and if you guys want to follow us on Instagram, we are the Brave Girls Podcast. Super easy to find us. And you guys can even shoot us a DM and see, like, talk about like how, like your thoughts on this whole um, event and just like, just talk with us because we would be, we would love to reach out to you guys. <laughs> yes. We want to get to know you. Listen to our mm -hmm. podcast. We have yes. a, a Q&A part. So if you ever have a question that you don't really know, the answer to and you want to ask some girls we will answer it on the podcast we'd love to hear yes from you. so um yeah we just want to take a moment and thank the salvation army for putting mm, on this event and for partnering with brave it's been such a cool time to be together and thank you to your host core for bringing you here and for putting this on so yeah yes. we've had such a good time and please remember it's time to be brave all right thank you so much hannah and michaela Thank you to all our guest speakers and our panelists and to the Salvation Army for putting this event on with Brave. I want to encourage all of you girls to keep your eyes out for a follow-up event that your host scores will be doing sometime this year. I'm gonna pray for you. Dear God, thank you for this event. Thank you for the technology that we have. I pray for these girls and for these women that they feel brave and that they feel encouraged. You are so good. I pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Oh,